Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this session, uh, we'll go on discussing about one important concept of the carbohydrate molecule which comes under the stereochemistry that what we call as muta rotation. So it's one of the important concepts for any competitive track as well as any theory examination that is going to cover in any state level degree examination or MPG examination. See, first we need to understand muta rotation. Before going to that, we need to understand one particular concept, what we call as specific rotation, right? So we know that specific rotation is simply nothing but when you keep a material in the form of a solution and when you pass the plane polarized light through that solution, that material will have a capability to rotate the plane polarized light to a certain angle. And that number of degrees of rotation observed by the plane polarized light when it is passed through a solution is simply called as specific rotation. And we know that specific rotation is simply indicated with the symbol alpha, right? And we know that if you consider the simplest carbohydrate molecule, the what we know as glucose, which is having the formula C6H12O6. Right, and we know that glucose can exist in two different forms. One is called as alpha D glucose, and other one is called as beta D glucose. So these two are collectively called as anomeric forms of glucose molecule. And we know that glucose is a dextrorotatory material, hence we call it as dextrose. Right. So both alpha D glucose and beta D glucose are dextrorotatory in nature and alpha D glucose is having a specific rotation value of around 111 degree and beta D glucose is having a specific rotation of 19.2 degrees. But if you consider any one of the anomeric form, any one of the anomeric form of glucose is placed in the form of a solution or else let me tell you in this way. In solid state, both alpha D glucose and beta D glucose are stable only. But when you keep any one of these material, any one of these anomers in the form of solution, as we said, they will show a definite specific rotation. But when you keep either of the anomeric form of glucose in the solution, if allow it to stand for a very long time, and we know that glucose is having, alpha D glucose is having 111 degree of specific rotation and beta D glucose is having 19.2 degrees of rotation. But when you keep any one of these anomers in the solution and allow to stand, the specific rotation value will go on changing and that will ultimately reach to a value 52.5 degrees. So when you keep alpha D glucose in the form of solution and allow it to stand, the specific rotation will decrease and reach us to your value 52.5 degrees. And when beta D glucose is kept in the form of solution and allowed to stand, the specific rotation will increase and it will reach us to your value of 52.5 degrees. And this is called as the equilibrium specific rotation. And in this way, the change in specific rotation of any one of the optically active isomer in the form of solution is simply called as muta rotation. That's a simple definition that we can give for muta rotation. You can observe both alpha D glucose and beta D glucose, both are changing, right? So both are the stereoisomers provided these two are both alpha D glucose and beta D glucose are diastereomers means they are not superimposable mirror images to each other but still they exhibit a specific rotation but this specific rotation value will change when they allow to stand and that what we call as muta rotation we can give a simplest definition for muta rotation the changing specific rotation of an optically active isomer on long standing is simply called as muta rotation and we have to observe uh, the mechanism of muta rotation the muta rotation can readily occur in presence of acetone 
pains. And now we shall proceed further and shall see how the muta rotation will occur and how the specific rotation value will get changed. In actual sense, the one question that comes to our mind is why the specific rotation of the anomer is going to change? Here in case it is going to decrease and here in this case it is going to increase. Why this thing is going to happen? The simple logic is when you allow to stand one anomer in the solution, the alpha D glucose will change us into beta D glucose and beta D glucose will change us into alpha D glucose but not completely until the gate reach a state of equilibrium. At that particular stage, at that particular stage, both the anomeric forms tend to exhibit the same specific rotation and that what the value we have written plus 52.5 degrees. And that is a simple logic why the specific rotation value is going to change. And that we shall explain by considering the mechanism of Mutha rotation. The mechanism of Mutha rotation is actually explained only by considering the cyclic structure of glucose only. The concept of Mutha rotation can be explained only on the basis of cyclic structure. It is highly impossible to explain the concept of Mutha rotation of both the anomeric forms of glucose by considering the open chain structure. We know that open chain structure which is proposed by Bayer and Kekulé is not able to explain all the properties of glucose molecule and many of the properties were explained only on the basis of cyclic structure and the concept of Mutha rotation and whatever the mechanism proposed for it clearly eliminates all the doubts regarding cyclic structure of glucose molecule and even we can apply the same concept for all the monosaccharide units. And now we shall see what is the mechanistic pathway of Mutha rotation. <coughs> In order to explain the mechanism, we shall consider the Havert form of the glucose molecule. And we know that here, first we shall consider the beta form. So we are having, this is the first position at which OH for OH group is on above side or top side, hence we call it as beta D glucopyranose. Right, this is the name of this material, and here we will be having H, OH, and here it is OH, H, and here it is H, OH, and at fifth position it will be H, and at sixth position it will be CH2. OH. So this is the structure of alpha D glucopyranose and we can say it is dextro in nature. And as I said, the reaction or the mechanism can be explained on the basis, I mean the mechanism can be explained or the Mutha rotation will occur in presence of acid and base, right? So we shall consider one acid material over here and we know that on the oxygen we will be having lone pair of electrons one of the lone pair will be donated to the hydrogen. So these one pair of electron will shift on to A that will come out in the form of A minus. And in order to satisfy the lone pair of electron, the bond present between this ethereal oxygen and this carbon will shift on to oxygen. So the bond will get breaks between oxygen and the first carbon atom. And in a similar trend, and in a similar trend, the base will come into picture and that base will pick this hydrogen and these bond pair of electrons will distribute between oxygen and carbon. So the reactions start to change in a reversible trend. So let us observe how the thing will going to change and here you can notice the cyclic structure has been broke and we are going to get open chain structure the open chain form of glucose but we cannot say whether it is alpha or beta because we cannot say that whether OH is present above or below at the position number 1 and here oxygen after receiving the hydrogen it will get changed into OH and here between carbon and oxygen already one sigma bond was there due to shifting of these two electrons it get changes into carbon oxygen double bond and one hydrogen will remain as it is and all the remaining components will be undisturbed 
H-O-H and CH2-OH. And now, the thing is, again we will be having lone pair of electrons on the oxygen. This lone pair will be donated to hydrogen. So, the pi bond electrons will shift on to oxygen to satisfy the lone pairs. And again, the lone pairs that are present on this oxygen will be donated to the carbon and the bond will shift on to oxygen. You can observe. So that the molecule will get changed. But the thing is, here in this first case, OH is present above. When the open chain form is changing into the cyclic structure, the OH group will generate at the bottom edge like this. So H, OH and OH, H, H, OH and at fifth position it will be H, sixth position CH2, OH and you can observe here we have written beta D glucopyranose and here we are going to get alpha D glucopyranose. And this material is also dextro in nature, so we can give plus symbol. And here once again, the picture comes into picture. Again, HA will come into picture and B minus will come into picture. Again, the alpha D glucopyranose changes into the open form, and this open chain form will change into beta D glucopyranose. This interconversion will occur continuously until the state of equilibrium will reach. Okay. So, alone, beta D glucopyranose will, so, will show a specific rotation of 19.2 degrees. Alone, alpha D glucopyranose will show a specific rotation of 111 degrees. But when they are allowed to stand, the alpha D form will try to change into beta D and beta D will try to change into alpha D. But once they reach the state of equilibrium, at that condition, the solution will exhibit a specific rotation of 52.2 5 degrees and this way the change in specific rotation will observe and that what we call is muta rotation and this is the logic one we can say muta rotation plays a crucial role in understanding the overall structure of a material especially the carbohydrate molecule that's all about the session thank you